you have to first define emotions with logic to be able to control something. And as veterans, we find that very difficult to do because first you have to recognize that emotions exist. I like to bring her in here when nobody's here because that way I can leave her off the leash. I'm going to put her vest on and she can just be free. She, when I have to go to the bathroom, she comes to the bathroom. And even when she's off the leash at home, if I go into the bathroom, she'll just lay down in the hall outside and wait for me to come out. She always has her eye on me. <laughs> so since January, I haven't been apart for, from her for more than like a day. It's will be fine. People ask to pet my dogs a lot, and a lot of times I have a hard time being nice about it, um, about saying no. I just say no. Because usually if you're nice about it or warm about it, um, or make eye contact with them or try to be human, uh, that just makes them want to pry more. It makes them more interested, and then they further engage with you, and then they're like, oh, well, what do you need the service dog for? Or is your dog in training? Or see, she knows I have treats in my hand, so she uh -huh. misbehaves. She's naughty. Lay down. Stay. She's trained. It's just like a dog, like a, any other person, like they're gonna test their boundaries occasionally and you have to remind them that you're the pack leader. Front. and watches my back, same thing at a counter and I'm checking out or whatever. And she just hangs out like that. Good girl. I'm gonna Good girl. Thank you. Good girl on my lap. Good girl. Thank you. Good girl. I didn't even realize at first that I had PTSD. I was just really angry. I was angry at everything. I was angry at everybody. I was just a miserable bitch. I can talk about it now because in the VA I did this prolonged exposure therapy, whereas before I would kind of avoid the subject or start crying, crying right away. Basically I was sexually assaulted, um, but I wasn't raped, I got away. <laughs> but this guy uh, threw me down and was like very forceful. Um, kept trying to stick his hand down my pants. I think he did a couple times. Um, and no matter how I like pleaded with him to get him to stop, I punched him in the face as hard as I could. And he just got off more on it. Like it turned him on even more. And he was like, you like this, you're a dirty girl. You know, <laughs> I was like, no, no, I'm not. It couldn't be more far from the truth. So I, I went through a range of emotions from anger to pleading and then I just turned on my Ferris Bueller and just went monotone and I was like I do not like this because I could tell that my emotions were just kind of making it was making him more excited and more forceful so the more I fought the more he liked it I was in a fob that I wasn't like really stationed at I was stationed at this tiny fob and I was there to get x-rays for my ankle and he was he was my medic he was taking care of me he was, he was in charge. He was my commanding officer, essentially. I had to do as he said. I was on crutches. My wrists hurt from being on the crutches. And he was like, well, let me see him. I was like, there's nothing to see. They're just sore from using the crutches. And he was like, let me see him. So I showed him my wrists, like, reluctantly, because I knew it was, like, a really awkward situation. He grabbed me and just threw me down. That's when he attacked me. But I screamed really, hard, really loud and... Um, 
somebody heard and came and asked me if everything was okay and then he let me up. And then the next day he tried to attack me again. Uh, yeah, and after that I, I filed the complaint. I found out that he was doing this to other women. So I was constantly running into him at our tiny little defac at every meal. Like he's sitting right there. He'd be standing over there with a group of guys like pointing at me and laughing. So now that's a trigger for me to see a group of guys laughing. They're having fun and I can't handle that. Like, I'm that messed up. Like, really? I just can't let those guys laugh and be cool? But yeah, it, he never lost his rank. He's in uniform with his stripes on, laughing with his buddies. And I'm the bad guy because I asked for it. That I was the troublemaker. So yeah, he was still allowed to practice as a medic to heal people when he really just wants to hurt them, especially women. <laughs> it was pretty clear to me. So. Good girl, mama. Good girl. Ready? And that took so much power away from me when I was a very, very strong person. So, <clears throat> I've been working to get the power back. <laughs> And like you know there that that the silver lining and like you can see the sun on the other side and you just want to like be on the other side of that cloud where it's all shiny and white and beautiful but you just can't you can't go back to the state of mind that you had before PTSD. It's all right, Puma. It's okay. It's, all right, Puma. it's okay. You're a good girl. When I get triggered, I know that emotions happen. Um, and Starving. when I get triggered and become hyper aware or aroused, then Sorry. that would be sort of an anxious or um, hyper active, intense feeling. Emotions to me are very illogical, and I'm a very logical person. So that's why I'm trying to develop a tool to make logic out of emotions. Really kind of silly, but I'm trying to measure. Um, what happens to you physio physiologically when you experience emotions. I've done a lot of research on it, so I feel like I'm in this really weird position of trying to fix myself. As an engineer, I want to solve problems, so I want to define feelings then as this scale from numb to intense. printing and machine shop. Um, so they have lathes, drill presses, band saws, um, all kinds of really neat, fun stuff. Hey, there you go. Your parts are right over there. Thank I hope that's the right size. Yeah, perfect. Awesome. So you printed two of them just in case? Uh, well, the first one kind of failed because I forgot to put it upside down. Oh, nice. So this one's no good? Uh, well, they're both good. Okay. Uh, the box on this first one failed because it tried to remove it. <laughs> it's kind of silly to see this printed because I did a really terrible job designing it. <laughs> but hopefully it'll work for the first prototype. Thanks, Luke. No problem. Um, so this is a prototype of the solo device that we're creating. I'm gonna attempt to weave some paracord into it um, to make the bracelet part. But um, what we're gonna do for the prototype is um, just put some LEDs in here and this will be the, the knob. So it'll be a wearable and you turn the knob depending on how you feel. So. If you're suffering from a PTSD episode and you don't want to make your son cry from using your mean voice because you're frustrated and you don't know how to control your emotions, um, you put the red button on, which indicates that you need a personal timeout. Um, the green button is, you're good, everything's normal. And the yellow button is, I'm starting to get frustrated 
if things don't change, I'm gonna need a personal timeout. Hello, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Ginger, I'm a biomedical engineer. We would like to talk to you today about a prototype we are developing, a wearable medical device for veterans with PTSD. U.S. military veterans, like myself, diagnosed with PTSD, suffer symptoms like avoidance, exaggerated stress response, and dissociation, to name a few, which can lead to suicidal ideation. How can we grow to establish a new community where we feel respected, safe, and involved? That's why we created this emotional communication tool, SOLO. in order to get your PhD you should really focus on something you're passionate about because it's, it's not an easy thing to do um, and I'm more passionate about this wearable device for veterans with PTSD because um, I have PTSD so I, I want to find a way to solve my own problem and I would like to be able to feel like I'm in control of my behavior I would like to be able to go out dancing and enjoy it without being paranoid, go out in public without being paranoid. Um, I'm pretty much uncomfortable and scared of everything, so I would like to, um, to get the joy back in my life, you know? Um, I don't know if it's possible. It's like when you deploy, you always want to go back home but you go back home and everything's different. Like you never get back to where you were before. I'm okay with that because that's, that's growth, that's resilience, that's the goal is to, to live with a disability and sort of just like really maximize your potential regardless. Like don't let it hold you back but actually end up better than you could have been before the diagnosis. So if I didn't have PTSD, I would be here, right? But I do, <laughs> so I'm here. But if I can figure out how to overcome it, then it would leapfrog over if I didn't have it at all. Because people who have hardships and challenges in life and overcome them end up on top of people who don't. Not better than them, but like in a better place, right? That's my goal.